After eight years, this prime minister is not worth the cost of housing. The cost of housing has, in fact, doubled since he promised to make housing more affordable. According to Rental.ca, rent has increased by over 20 percent throughout Canada in just two years. That is over $400 more for rent. Will the Prime Minister reverse his policies that cause this crisis? He needs to stop the bureaucrats who are blocking construction, and he needs to bring down deficits and interest rates. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative member for Dufferin Caledon best described our ambitions when it comes to housing. He said that our housing minister seems to announce a new program or announcement every day. He is absolutely right. We have been working hard week after week. We have reached new agreements through the fund in the Housing Accelerator Fund, and we have developed new tools to He's speed up, up the construction of affordable on, housing. Dude. We will continue to focus on our goal, which is to speed up home building. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Announcements, programs, checks, yet no housing. People cannot live in housing or announcements made by this Prime Minister, who is just not worth the cost. In fact, Construction sites have decreased. They have decreased by 28 percent in December, as compared with last December. Will the Prime Minister put an end to these programs, which balloon bureaucracy costs and interest rates, so that we can truly build housing? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the only thing the Conservative leader is offering is insults. He insults Quebec's elected officials and politicians. He insulted the mayor of Niagara. He uses the homeless as accessories for his own photo ops. A responsible leader, Mr. Speaker, will take action to invest in communities and to invest in housing. That's what we are doing. We remo removed GST for construction of new rental housing. We also announced funding, including $900 million for Quebec for housing. We are here to invest and to build. He's just here to insult people. The opposition. Mr. Speaker, hundreds of thousands of dollars are being spent on bureaucracy. We don't need this bureaucracy. The bureaucracy has ballooned by 50 percent since this prime minister took office. What we do need is not bureaucracy, but housing. His housing agency said that we will need 3.5 million housing units. But this week, the CBC said that given our population growth and the drastic drop in construction, we will, in fact, need 5 million housing units. Where will these 5 million families live? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, he's talking about bureaucracy, but on the contrary, we're investing in municipalities in order to decrease red tape and to speed up home building throughout the country. We have signed about 30 housing accelerator fund deals in order to build more units faster. We are going to increase densification. We've impro we're improving zoning. We are speeding up the use of certain lands, and we are increasing affordable housing. We're here to invest in a real and tangible way. Meanwhile, he just wants to insult people. Opposition. Mr. Speaker, these are the same promises he made eight years ago yes. before he doubled housing costs. He's not worth the cost of housing, which is up 100 percent. In the last two years alone, according to Rent.ca, the rent is up 20 percent, or $400 for the average family. And now we learn that construction is in free fall, down 28 percent last December versus the December before. Will he stop funding bureaucracy and driving up interest rates so that we can bring homes Canadians can afford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Our housing ambition can be best summed up by the Conservative member for Dufferin Caledon, who said that it seems that every day our Minister of Housing has a new program, a new announcement, or a new check for Canadians. That's exactly right, Mr. Speaker. We continue to work. Canadians with municipalities.
municipalities across the country, municipalities need rather insult to get more homes built yeah, faster, Mr. Mr. Speaker. The investments we're making, including things like taking the GST off purpose built rental housing, which the Conservatives voted against, will continue to create more homes for Canadians right across the country. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, you can't live in announcements and programs. You need homes that have walls and floors and ceilings. The Prime Minister doing another selfie instead of a, in front of a construction site won't do that. In fact, construction is down 28 percent in December after eight years of this Prime Minister's promises and spending. Will he accept our common sense plan to build homes and not bureaucracy? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, just last week I was in Kitchener-Waterloo making an announcement uh, for things today that people are moving into in the coming weeks, and we are announcing how we are building things for tomorrow, as opposed to him who just chooses to insult Canadians, insult mayors, and insult our intelligence. The Honourable Member for Belay Chambly. The government wants to delay by three years upholding a court decision regarding medical assistance in dying for mental health. Now, imagine that the Conservatives are elected. All made would be totally locked down for a long time. They will never pass made, the Conservatives. So this Prime Minister, does he realize that he's acting as if he's afraid of the religious right? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, we agree that there is a threat to fundamental rights and freedoms. That is, a Conservative government would be a threat to rights and freedoms. That said, when it comes to medical assistance in dying, it is a difficult and personal decision. We need to mm -hmm. ensure that we are protecting the most vulnerable. We must also ensure that we are upholding fundamental rights and freedoms. So. When it comes to mental really illness topic. and I think minors, I'm okay with it, we will continue to reflect on the matter. Yeah, we will continue to, a, it's, to it's thoroughly very, study the matter very, and to consult before moving forward. The Honourable Leader of the Bloc Québécois. There is a solution, though. Quebec, in fact, put forward a solution which is supported by the National Assembly of Quebec. In the Liberal legislation, there is an element allowing any province, such as Quebec, to move forward with advance requests for medical assistance in dying. So the three-year extension would be fine in that case because Quebec could move forward based on Quebec's values. Does the Prime Minister support Quebec's request? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I said, this matter of advance requests Ha was brought up many years ago as being a very important decision we need to make, but a difficult one at that. If a Canadian makes an advance request saying, for instance, if my health reaches such and such a state, can I have medical assistance in dying? But then the person might not necessarily be able to give free and informed consent. So it's a very difficult it decision is. for us to make and for our society to make. We will continue to work with Quebec. We will continue to reflect on this and study it. Oh. The Prime Minister can learn a lot from the young women I met earlier today who are struggling to put food on the table. They're living a struggle the Prime Minister has never had to face. They're getting ripped off by corporate grocery stores, and the Prime Minister let it happen for over two years. So will the Prime Minister get serious now about taking on corporate greed by supporting my bill to reduce the price of groceries? Here, here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, uh, right now, with the fall economic statement, we're proposing significant measures to increase competition uh, in the grocery sector. Uh, many of them ideas that we are in alignment with the leader of the NDP on. Uh, we believe in moving forward in greater competition in the grocery sector. Uh, that's something the NDP and the Liberals agree on. It's not something the Conservatives agree on because their chief strategist is actually on the law laws payroll, and they uh, choose uh, to continue to promote uh, disinformation and misinformation while they're defending big groceries. On this side of the House, we'll stand up for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Have a history of letting rich CEOs off the hook. We can change that today. Here, here. Le Premier ministre. The Prime Minister could learn from many of the young women I met with today. They are struggling to make ends meet. They're living a life that they've never lived before. They are being scammed by grocery giants, but the Prime Minister seems to support those grocery giants. So will the Prime Minister vote in favour of my bill to bring down grocery prices? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I am very open to the NDP's efforts to increase competition in the grocery sector. We believe in that. In fact, in our legislation, we have included measures which are parallel to the NDP's measure. We absolutely want to increase competition in the grocery sector. The NDP and the Liberal Party share that desire. The Conservatives, though, they listen to their lobbyists, law of laws lobbyists. They defend the interests of big grocers rather than defending Canadians and bringing down grocery prices. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Exactly. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister, he is not worth the crime. He has caused a lot of car theft. Mark Roos says that his Dodge Ram was stolen. But he put an air tag in the truck. He was able to find out that the truck was at the port of Montreal. He knows where it is. But port agencies and port management say that he cannot go and find his Dodge Ram because there aren't enough scanners. Will the Prime Minister accept my common sense plan? Will he buy 24 scanners in order to find this man's Dodge Ram? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Organized crime has caused an increase in car Just theft. Near. Does he have something on his nose? Throughout Canada. The Conservative Party's attacks on C5 and C75 are absolutely not the solution. Their attacks are not the right way to solve the problem. We will continue to invest. For instance, we have given the government of Ontario $121 million to oh fight dear. auto theft. Sure, we will also continue to work with the Canada Border Services Agency to increase their staff. We are here to help. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. At ports, after eight years, the port authorities are only scanning or inspecting 1% of shipping containers leaving our ports. And that led to the case where Mark Roos had his 2021 Dodge Ram stolen. Luckily, he had an Apple Air tag so he could follow its transit to the Port of Montreal, where he knows it to be. He called both the cops and the Port Authority, both of which said they don't know which box it's in, so they can't find it. So why won't he accept my common sense plan? to buy 24 scanners so we can scan the boxes, find the Dodge Ram, and give it back to Mark. Yeah. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this would be perhaps a little more credible from the Conservative Party if they hadn't cut a thousand CBSA officers when they were last in government. And they'd proposed to cut 400 more uh, if they had won the 2015 election. The reality is we restored every single border officer they cut and added 800 more. And we're continuing to do the necessary work. We recovered 1,800 stolen vehicles last year. We'll continue to do... I'm going to, sorry to interrupt the Prime Minister and to all members. I'm going to ask members please to keep their comments to themselves until they have the microphone or have the floor so that they'll be able to ask their questions or answer their questions. The Honourable Prime Minister has 15 seconds on the clock. Mr. Speaker, 
while Conservatives cut uh, frontline border services officers, as, along with cuts to the RCMP, cuts to police forces across the country, we invested in them. And we're going to continue to do that with $121 million for Ontario, more investments for port and border security. We're going to continue to step up and keep Canadians safe. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. You know the Prime Minister's strength is not math, but the facts are that we took office. There were about 12,000 working as CBSA officials, and when we left office, there, was there were over 14,000. Oh. So 14,000 is more than 12,000, oh. to help the Prime Minister, with the numbers. It's true that we cut back office bureaucracy and high-priced consultants, which he has ballooned, and that's why after eight years, he has increased auto theft by 32 percent. Will he accept our common sense plan to cut high price consultants and hire more frontline inspectors? The right honourable Prime Minister. I can't help but smile when the Leader of the Opposition talks about high priced consultants because it's his campaign being run by a high priced consultant for law laws. When he stands in this place and across the country uh, wrenching his heartstrings uh, about the, the uh, prices the Canadians are paying for groceries, when his top advisor is in the pocket of law laws giving him the same talking points as she gives Gavin, Galen Weston when he appeared at Parliamentary Committee. Mr. Speaker, if Canadians are going to believe this leader of the opposition, he needs to come clean with who is funding his organization. Order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He's sure getting desperate if he has to blame Conservative campaign workers for the fact that he raised food prices, especially when, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister's new marketing director, Max Veliket, did marketing for Loblaws for four years. Don Guy, Don Guy, the Prime Minister's chief pollster, works for GT and Co., which collects checks from Loblaws. Does Dan Arnold, his other pollster, getting checks from law laws? Are they the ones that forced him to quadruple the carbon tax on our food? <laughs> the right honourable Prime Minister. <laughs> Wednesday. I know it's Wednesday and members are very keen to hear for, uh, the answer to this question, so I'll ask them to please restrain themselves while the Honourable, the Right Honourable, while the Right Honourable Prime Minister answers the question. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, you can tell it's Wednesday because this morning uh, the members of the Conservative Caucus got to hear directly from Jenny Byrne, who sits in their caucus with them, uh, giving them advice. So that is exactly where they're coming. When she is actively on the Loblaws payroll, while at the same time feeding lines to the Leader of the Opposition uh, about food prices and concocting uh, a theory around carbon price uh, and food prices that, as the member from Regina, Louvain, pointed out yesterday, has no basis in fact, we see the kind of torque he chooses to pull. There. That's, that's not so hard. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Oh, Mr. Speaker, he makes it too easy. He talks about caucus meetings and law laws. Get this. The Prime Minister had someone who is his director of caucus services named Julie DeWolf, who is now a lobbyist for law laws. <laughs> not only that, not only that, he digs up a lot of dirt. His chief dirt, dirt digger, Kevin Bosch, left his office so that he could go and work as a lobbyist for law laws. <laughs> Continue going down the list of all of his law laws lobbyists, Mr. Speaker.
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It is quite something to watch the flailing of the Conservatives right now as they do anything to try to distract from the fact that their campaign manager, their, the leader of the opposition's top advisor, is and still, a, still contrib gets contributions and paychecks from Loblaws. This is an issue. When he has stand, stood up and pretended to care about food prices, when we hear the exact same talking points come out of Galen Weston's mouth as out of the Leader of the Opposition's mouth on some invented connection between the price on pollution and grocery prices, we know exactly who is behind the Conservative okay. Party. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Former Minister Lametti and other Liberal colleagues gave some thought to the possibility of opening up the Canadian Constitution. Well, Quebec is considering something a referendum. That's a major word. We are considering a referendum on repatriating all immigration-related authorities and powers to Quebec. So should the Prime Minister give Quebec back the authorities and powers that it deserves so that we can have immigration as we want it? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, all countries, federal governments are responsible for immigration. Canada's federal government handles borders and immigration. But we have, for a long time, recognized the special situation of Quebec and the need to promote and protect Quebec's language and culture. We have given Quebec powers that no other province has so that Quebec can defend itself we will continue to work with Quebec on immigration. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Okay, so we agree then. Quebec should become its own country and have all of these powers. Now, the Prime Minister and his minister say that they are working hand in hand with Quebec. The immigration minister says that they're working hand in hand with Quebec, but the Quebec immigration minister wants to hold a referendum to give Quebec all control over its own immigration. So does that not testify to, is that not a testament to the failure of the immigration system and the immigration minister? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are continuously reminded of the fact that the Bloc Québécois always looking for squabbles between Quebec and Canada. They're always looking to bring up referendums. Here's the truth, though, Mr. Speaker. We are working hand-in-hand -hand with the government of Quebec, and we have been doing so for decades. Ottawa and Quebec have been working together well for decades in order to manage immigration, to ensure that immigration targets are appropriate for Quebec. We will continue this work respectfully, without any squabbles, despite what the bloc wishes. The Honourable Opposition Leader. The crime, Mr. Speaker. He unleashed the car theft crisis by bringing in house arrest and, and bail, not jail, for repeat career car thieves, and by allowing our ports to become sieves where our cars are stolen from so much so that we're now becoming world famous for the Prime Minister's failures. The Ghana Economic and Organized Crime Office says we are in possession of stolen vehicles, the victims, it's all in Canada. No Canadian agency has approached us directly or made a formal complaint. Will he take the money from the back office bureaucrats and consultants and put it into frontline law enforcement to protect our car? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Yeah, the Leader of the Opposition likes to make uh, base political accusations. He likes to talk about C5 and C75 as the reason there is auto theft in this country. The reality is C5 is the bill that keeps mandatory minimum penalties for car theft on the books, and C75 is the bill that raises the maximum penalty on car theft. We've continued to step up in terms of keeping Canadians safe. We will 
continue to invest in the CBSA and in the resources necessary uh, to counter these challenges. We will keep working based on facts and evidence. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, here are the actual facts. Let's go through them. C5 keeps mandatory prison sentences. Mr. Speaker, they were already in place, put there by the previous Conservative government. They weren't created by C5. What C5 did is they brought in, it brought in house arrest oh. for career car thieves so they can watch Netflix or perhaps play Grand Theft Auto in their living room and then go out onto the street and steal another car whenever they want. Will he follow my common sense plan to end house arrest for career car thieves? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in the Leader of the Opposition's simplistic worldview, someone sitting on their couch at home playing video games goes out and steals and escalate. That's not what happens, Mr. Speaker. Organized crime is directly involved in the massive spike in auto thefts in this country. That's why what we're stepping up on in investment in anti-organized uh, crime, investments against money laundering that that party voted against, investments in more powers and more uh, resources for Ontario to counter auto theft, and indeed more resources for the CBSA that they cut when they last left office will continue to be there. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, actually people do steal cars when they're on house arrest because all they have to do is open the door and walk out and steal the car. Exactly. Then there's his bail policy which allowed the same 40 offenders to be arrested 6,000 times in Vancouver in a year, many of them car thieves. So will he accept my common sense plan to get rid of house arrest and bring in jail, not bail, for career car thieves. Yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in all the questions the Leader of the Opposition asked about car theft, he hasn't once mentioned organized crime, which is the cause of car theft in this country right now. And that's why perhaps he's not mentioning it because when we brought forward measures to counter organized crime and money laundering, the Conservative Party voted against them. Uh, we move forward with more resources for Ontario, $121 million to counter organized crime and car theft. The Conservative Party voted against. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to anchor ourselves in facts and data and deliver on keeping Canadians safe. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he wants facts. Here's another fact. Extortions are up two hundred and eighteen percent since he took office. Why? Because he got rid of mandatory jail time for extortion with a weapon. So now he allows extortionists to go around with guns harassing small business owners in Brampton, in Surrey, in Calgary and Edmonton where horror stories are unfolding. Will he agree to our common sense plan to, re to reverse catch and release so that Canadians are safe from extortion? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. First of all, Mr. Speaker, the situation faced by far too many people across this country around expo extortion from organized crime is unacceptable and that is why we are taking action directly with the RCMP and local police forces to counter it. But once again, we see Conservatives falling into the same far-right American trap uh, in their approach on Come crime on, that doesn't work, that doesn't keep Canadians safe, that it sounds good in sound bites and attacks, but doesn't actually deliver safer communities. It's like their opposition to gun control and their desire to put assault-style weapons back on the street. They don't keep Canadians safe. The work we does. So I'd like to, uh, colleagues, uh, before you saw a hesitation in the previous round when the speaker was a little confused as to who was going to be speaking next, it, as it turns out, we had deprived the leader of the opposition a question. I don't know if the leader of the opposition wants it now or would he like it in the next round? He'll take it right now. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, let's talk about the cold, hard facts. There were two-thirds less ex cases of extortion in the last year of the Common Sense Conservative government than there are today. In the 10 years we were in office, the number of car thefts fell 
by half. And that was because we targeted the worst offenders, kept them in prison, we secured our ports, and stopped organized crime. The Prime Minister has only multiplied crime with his catch and release policies. Will he follow the evidence and reinstate a common sense criminal justice? Before, I, I hate to interrupt the honourable member, and I don't know if it was picked up on the mics, but I did pick up some language that's unparliamentary, and I'll ask all members to please watch themselves. The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what we hear from the Leader of the Opposition is uh, under the previous Conservative government, everything was perfect, and what he is proposing to do is to make Canada great again. That is not what Canadians want. He is pining for a nostalgia that, quite frankly, Canadians do not feel. They remember what he did as part of Stephen Harper's failed he's up housing in the polls, minister. Way more he than remembers you are. the people who the rights of individual ind uh, Indigenous peoples violated, uh, the uh, ignoring of environmental responsibility. In my opinion, that's why his, he's so up on immigration is because We're if, if, if you're being brought in by a liberal. Government, you're going to be more favored to vote for them. Canadian.